Well, Koli, it really is a beautiful feeling to be able to see Kaone Molefe with his family here at OR Tambo International Airport. We had a very brief conversation with him um, just a short while ago about his experience um, when he was in Ukraine just before he made it through into Poland. But I'm going to try to grab him away from his family just so we can quickly speak to him about his current experience. Kaone, can I just quickly grab you away from your family for a second? Um, I just want, to, want, to, want you to just explain to us um, just briefly your experience in the Ukraine um, before heading over into Poland and how that was like for you. Uh, for me it was very gruesome uh, because it was a very lengthy journey of about 24 hours. I traveled all throughout the night. Uh, once the fourth, fourth or fifth bombing went off, uh, I decided to take a decision and just, you know, make my way to Volksana station, which is the main uh, metro station that makes uh, the connection through all the other cities in Ukraine. And through the grace of God, we found a train because there really weren't any trains. I literally got on the last train, and just as I was about to get on the train, there was a bombing. People were evacuating to multiple venues. Uh, there's uh, because Ukraine has one of the deepest subway stations, so they've been using some of the train stations as bomb shelters. So people were evacuating there, or you had the choice to evacuate to the train. You know, it was just a very lengthy journey. We got to the border. Got to the border. Once we got there, we had to walk five hours. After walking five hours, we had to stand in a queue for about 12, 12 to 14 hours. After that, you know, we got to the front. We got all these racial prejudice situations whereby people of color were being subjected to pepper sprays, assault, and multiple levels of abuse. And it's very sad to see that even some women got groped and, you know, sexually assaulted. Obviously, they don't have the platform to speak on it, but, you know, during all that movement in the crowd, they experienced those things. And I, I, I just thank God that I was able to, you know, jump the fence and make it through across to the exit point, of which I still was subjected to assault. So I just thank God that, you know, I was able to make it alive. That's really, for me, that's the big thing. I was able to make it alive. I at some point thought I wouldn't make it this far. At some point I thought that, you know, I wouldn't be able to be where I am. And to be in that frame of mind, it's not a place uh, you want to be. It's a very dark place. And uh, a lot of people are still there, you know. People are still in camps. People are still in various, uh, you know, institutionalized organizations. But, uh, you know, I had a, I had a far different experience. I, I met uh, some really cool people. Uh, you know, when I got to Poland, I met this gentleman called Paul. When I got to Germany, I met this gentleman called Solomon. You know, they're people that are working with organizations and missionaries to accommodate people and feed them and shelter them and just make sure that their traumatic experience becomes a more, you know, brighter day for them. And uh, I couldn't be more grateful to have met such people because it means that uh, I was able to deal with my trauma and deal with my mental health in a more positive light and I was interacting with people that respected the fact that I have mental health problems through this journey and uh, all I can say is I'm really grateful yeah that's really what I am grateful I have I don't have much to say but I'm really really grateful it must have been a really terrible experience um, especially the racial discrimination that yeah. you went through Kaone but from that, what do you think you were able to learn? And before we even get into that, um, the South African government, was there any assistance um, from them in you getting back to the country? Uh, there was no monetary assistance from the embassy. Uh, to be honest, for myself, I made my way through. I connected myself through, uh, through various organizations. Uh, I just want to applaud the Pakistani government uh, because they, I met a Pakistani uh, resident who helped me navigate and meet, connect with all these missionaries. And I also want to applaud all these various missionaries that have done some great work. And, uh, you know, we know that it's difficult in a time like this to give back. Uh, but, you know, I must say a lot of Europeans are giving more than they should. And uh, there's nothing that you can say you need. They're providing shelter, they're providing baby food, food clothing, toiletries, whatever you need, you name it, they have it and they are providing it for refugees. Um, I just wish that, you know, it was like that in Africa. I wish that our government could go 
far beyond the means to ensure that as residents, as citizens, we are safe. I mean, the Nigerian government just flew out. A flight landed just yesterday in Nigeria, in Abuja. Our country couldn't say the same, which is sad. And our government needs to reconsider their stance on what they're doing for the youth because you're literally making the youth fear going abroad because they know they lack the support, they lack the resources. And I mean, for an ambassador to be able to tell me that the government doesn't have money, it's quite devastating. It's actually unfathomable. So, uh, you can just give grace and give thanks to the Lord for being alive. Thank you so much. Let me release you to your family. Thank you for your time this morning. <laughs> like, my family comes first, sure. I need to see my grandmother, my queen. Oh, if I can see my grandmother, I'll be so happy. Yeah. That woman is amazing. She's been my strength throughout this whole journey. Her messages have been holding me up. And... I cannot thank her enough for being alive. I cannot thank God enough for keeping her alive. And, you know, if I didn't experience this journey without her, I think it would have been far more different. But, like, I was privileged enough to still have my grandmother, my queen, my queen, oh, my queen. I love that woman so much. Mama, I love you. Yeah, if she ever sees this, I love you, Mama, so much. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really very excited to be back. Um, Koli, and of course, the big thing for him is to see his grandmother 